Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first of the playoffs. We have Royal Vagabonds taking on third impact here in the playoffs. This is set to be a spicy series. Royal Vagabonds coming into this as the number four seed. Third impact coming in as the number five seed. So let's uh let's go ahead and let's jump right into this draft here real quick. Any thoughts on this uh on this matchup for uh for you, Ignite? Um, I haven't started my shit yet. Oh, shit. We didn't do a countdown. Yeah, go. Yeah, what do you what do you think of these two teams here, Ignite? Uh, so far, I am seeing uh, terrifyingness on both sides, if I'm totally honest. Just absolutely terrifying champions. Uh, Ergot right now, I feel, is... A super underrated, just crazy strong pick. Set right now, he's crazy strong. I've seen him just tearing up the solo queue. Volibear, always just just a solid pick that you can't really go wrong with. Viego, oh my, like, Gwen, like, oh my, how, uh, these, these are scary teams that we got going so far. Yeah, absolutely. Right now on the side of Royal Vagabonds, they have three very strong dueling champions. Um, as far as how they'll synergize together, that'll be very interesting to see. Uh, but these are some very powerful picks right now with uh, looking like the Viego going to be in the jungle and the Bolly Bear in the top lane. So, you know, I'm a fan, honestly. Uh, I know that Gwen has been real popular in top lane as well. So they kind of had that three-way flex with the Kaisa and the Alistar in the bot lane. It's a very strong kill pressure bot lane so far. Like if I'm looking at these drafts right now and I'm thinking like who I might want to give an edge to, Currently, I'm really liking Royal Vagabond's draft. I I'm am loving like... Royal Vagabonds. Ooh, I do like the Kog'Maw pick, though, from third Yeah, Kog'Maw is very strong. Like um, now there Especially was no into that specific man. team, the uh, the Alistar, the, uh, the Volibear. Like, they need yeah. this percent health damage on his W. Yeah, Kog'Maw can definitely do some work here, but interesting enough, there's no Lulu pick here, so they decided to opt for the Braum, even though Lulu is arguably one of the best picks with Kog'Maw, or at least the most popular pick with Kog'Maw. So curious to see if they're still able to have the same kind of protection for this Kog'Maw and being able to enable him to uh, pop off and carry these fights. Um, you know, you it, really do want something that can build art and sensor. True. Um, I really do. I do. I mean, I have to say, I do like Third Impact's line here. They have a lot of beef just standing in front of Kog. So that he can just lay on the damage. Like I I can I, I like the identity that I'm seeing from TI. Yeah, absolutely. And looking like we are now at the pause. So uh we are gonna go ahead and jump over to the first timestamp here for the game so we can get this uh underway. Like that'll be at 850. Alrighty, I am here. Ready on you, Ignite. I am at 850. All righty. All righty, and here we are loading into the Summoner's Rift. Excited All for this right. spicy matchup. This should be a good game. I'm excited. Yeah, Got and uh, looking at these starting items, we have three Doran's Blades coming out of the side of uh third impact here so you know ergot and set both of them can kind of opt for Dorn's shield if they think they're going to be you know doing some more trading or not trying to be nearly as aggressive um i do like Dorn's blade on ergot but as far as the set pick i think i would have opted for the Dorn's shield it kind of allows you to take more aggressive trades with the gwen uh and that being said you know if if you take advantageous or even even trades with her with your passive sustain and Doran shield sustain, generally, once you have cooldowns back up, you can look to all in for a kill. And especially taking Ignite, um, that's something I would have liked to have seen here. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm guessing that the set is looking to be aggressive early uh, and try and like and just establish lane dominance with the uh, 
with the Doran's Blade starting item, I'm I'm a little curious about it, to, to be totally honest. I usually see the Doran Shield come out on set, but um, let's see what he can do with it. Yeah, and looking like it's just going to be the standard, you know, five point from both teams. Nobody trying to look to do anything, uh, anything crazy right out the gate. You know, just seeing right now, Ergot kind of just chilling in this top brush. Uh, Volibear, though, is a little bit out of position in where you would traditionally want to five point. Normally, you would want to stand in that entrance to prevent any kind of invades or at least be able to spot them out. So, right. they I'm, would I'm have curious no clue about lack if they of went for it. in the river. Yeah, yeah, like exactly. that TI could come in through the river right there. They would have no idea that their blue is gone. Yeah, um, and looking like the set did decide to start with his E going for that early stun trade with the uh, with the Gwen there. So already, you know, trying to take a little bit of advantage. But subsequently, right now, Conquer has lane control. He does, but uh, I got to say that he's getting a lot more back from that Doran's Blade than I expected him to. Um, yeah, absolutely. He's Hit maintaining a uh, really so. Ooh. <laughs> Right now, he's he's losing the health bar advantage, but he does have very powerful uh, lane sustain with the passive. But without the Doran shield, you know, taking each one of these trades or taking any kind of uh, any kind of damage from Conquer here every time his E is a cooldown, you know, it starts to whittle you down. And at some point, you're not going to be able to take this. But here in the top side, Urgot taking a very aggressive trade right now with Sidro. Sidro dropping down to about half HP, and Urgot forced to use the E to get out of there. So, really nice trade there. Yeah, looking like so far, Royal Vagabond's definitely putting their foot on the metal right now, trying to uh, pressure Third Impact into uh, taking some of these fights. Yeah, they're definitely being aggressive in their lanes right now, um, looking to be dominant, looking to be the uh, aggressors. Um, trying, it seems, to keep TI on their back foot and doing a pretty decent job of it. Oh, oh wow. here we go. Another trade going in right now. Volibear going in, taking a big chunk out of this Urgot. Urgot now getting dropped very low and sitting right now at about a quarter of his HP forced to use the potion. Ooh, that was a big trade for Royal Vagabonds. Huge. And now yeah. mid, we Ooh, got some action Conquer going. taking a big chunk of damage. Trying to opt in for a bad fight there while the minion wave was stacked against him. So now he's going to be having to sit back under his tower and just wait for this thing. That's going to give mid prior over to this set, and that should just be a first scuttle, possibly even double scuttle for this Amumu if he goes for it. Right there, we see the power of the Doran's Blade start on set. Um, he's able to stay in lane that entire time and be dangerous once he uh, got his health back, and that, that's exactly what's happened. He's now got lane control, and uh, Conqueror's kind of on his back foot. Yeah, so seeing a little like back and Mr. forth here Cat. in the mid lane. Yeah, Mr. Cat gonna have to now walk all the way around long ways towards his bottom side after he already cleared it to try to get to this bottom side scuttle. Amumu, however, deciding to opt for the reset after taking the uh, the top side scuttle. So, you know, maybe thinking that Viego might have started on his blue path down, but now this is gonna be able to, you know, even out the jungle right now. Uh, first reset, though, did come out of a Mumu, so he should be a little bit faster on the tempo. He picked up two ruby crystals on that back and a potion, so he's got the health advantage if he decides to engage. It looks like he might be doing that. Looks like they might be oh, trying to more collapse on the here. Viego. Yeah, and looking like they're trying to collapse on Viego, but right now in the mid lane, Conquer taking a very aggressive fight here with Notorious, oh. but Notorious coming out ahead with the first blood, and now we got over here in the bottom side of the map. The bottom lane has rotated right now. Listen to the beat. Barely getting out of that force to use his flash to get over the wall. And Three looking like that's does just... not happen. Yeah, and wow, ultimately what a they... fight in mid there, though. Yeah, absolutely. Great job out of Notorious mid, understanding his damage and knowing that that's a fight that he can take. Played it very well and ended up picking up the kill over Conquer. Conquer was forced to use his teleport to get back to lane. So un even though Notorious mid did get that kill and use his ignite, he's now going to lose uh, some waves here. After this he wave is. gets crashed in, and Looks first like dragon is getting started up by Royal Vagabonds here. They're going to really, really need this Ocean Dragon, uh, yeah. especially against that giant, beefy front line that TI is representing with right now. Uh, but yeah. it's going to go right over to them with no no uh, contestation at all from the side of TI. They just hand it over to him. Yeah, and Ocean Dragon's a very powerful Drake, especially in the early laning phase. Having that health regen is always super, super nice. It especially helps out this uh, this Gwen here in the mid lane, being able to sustain up and basically be able to match the uh, the lane sustain now of this set uh, for the most part. So 
you know that yeah. kind of advantage that he had he doesn't really have so much anymore other than uh, this one kill lead the cs no, is looking very even though she had yeah. a tremendous help from that ocean drake like set was just bullying her with his extra oh, oh. Ocean goes in flash e hits the stun uses the ultimate to pull him back in conquer now forced to try to run away did already burn the w won't have the extra resistances and that looks like it'll be all she wrote. We'll be able to get out of that alive. So that is the flash and the ultimate out of the set, not being able to pick up a kill there. Uh, looking really like nice it only got the flash out of Gwen. The oh, yeah, some action top lane. There. Yeah, just a little bit of trading, it looks like, as uh, Sidro currently has a wave advantage, you know, trying to look for these aggressive trades. Urga has to be very careful. Oh, and looking oh, like we got some getting caught out here bot lane going in flash out of the alistar and they pick up the kill on the lenny and now they're looking for a more a mumu trying to get out of this and looking like he'll just take a big chunk of damage but ultimately will be able to escape and you know flash for the kill is very much worth it there especially since alistar is running the hex flash you know he is very comfortable trading his flash there because you know he still has that engage option all he has to do is you know look for something maybe a little bit more creative out of brush or over walls but he still is sitting very pretty right now and that kill did go over to the viego so they yeah do have to... that was the viego yeah. scary to have that killed on oh actually top lane. your top ergot lands the e hits the flip and looking like it's just going to be a little bit of a trade does have a fully stacked conquer right now i'm looking here mid lane though conquer notorious doing a little bit of trading themselves set opting oh. not to use the w there even though it was stacked up quite a bit looks like it's starting to heat up a little bit in here they're looking for their trades they're looking for fights more now yeah, we are about seven and a half minutes into this game right now, and the gold is dead even, give or take 100 gold. About so 100 this is a gold. very close game. The Viego, though, that's really, it looks like they're going to try, and um, if I'm reading this correctly, they're going to try and funnel everything that they can into the Viego just because of how like incredibly powerful that champion is once he's fed. Uh, it can really counter that that giant front line that, that TI is running with right now by becoming TI's own front line. And that's a, you know, that's a terrifying aspect to, to have to deal with. They don't have enough damage to deal with that type of uh, tankiness. You know, Kog'Maw is basically the only damage they really have on this team. Seth's going to be able to put some out in Urgot in the late game, but uh, for the most part, they're going to be relying on Kog to shred down. Yeah, and look, look we are seeing a gank Royal coming out of here bombs. top side. Urgot using the E to get away. The Flash comes out of Sidro using the ultimate, and now Beyonder forced to use the ultimate there and is not able to get anything in there, and that will be a kill, but here's a Mumu on the counter gank, goes in, hits the ultimate, two-man stun, trying to 1v2 this right now, getting dropped quite low, but also getting them low is a very close fight. The W comes out from Sidro, gives them a huge chunk of healing oh, in the oh, Flash oh. kill from Viego, and they get two for nothing there. Wow, Whoa, what a fight. Bond's just looking really good right now. Wow, what a fight. That's what you want to have if you're on the side of Royal Vagabonds right now. That's everything that you need, that you were hoping for. Uh, Viego now, two kills. Volibear, one kill. And those two champions are just terrifying champions to behold as they, as they stack gold on themselves. The items they can get, the power they can exert is just phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. And looking at it right now, TP coming out here topside. Sidro going immediately onto the Urgot here. And here's Viego again for another gank. Amumu is topside trying to rotate over here, but it might be too little too late. Urgot getting dropped very low, and there is another kill onto this Viego. Meanwhile, on the bottom side of the map here, Conquer did roam down here for a gank on bottom side trying to do something. Amumu right now trying to do his thing top. His Notorious Mid is now rotated top. It is now a 2v2 here in the top side of the map. Urgot does not have his ultimate and there goes set using his pushing mr cat away mr cat ends up getting the kill onto a moon getting another kill but gets traded back over to the set set now in a 1v1 with this volley bear getting dropped very low trying to run away it will barely live with his life keeping the blue buff on him and volley bear now has top lane control this is a four and one viego at 10 minutes wow what what an exchange right there oh my goodness <clears throat> i don't think that could have gone really any better for royal vagabonds the viego as you said now four and one just scary scary uh ti is in a little bit of a bad spot here um uh, in order to take control back of this game they're going to need to i think focus on getting their bot lane as strong as possible and i haven't really seen any ganks from the mumu coming out bot lane there was some action earlier but um in order to establish some dominance, 
they're going to need uh, that cog as bad as possible, especially having to deal with this Viego now who can he can just take over basically any champion that he feels like it. He's going to be able to one shot anybody that he get, is able to jump onto. And if he can get onto cog, uh, that just shreds, that just shreds their own team using their own team against them um, is going to go very, very poorly. Uh, TI is needs to do something to shut down the Viego or they're going to have a real problem on their hands. Yeah, absolutely. Looking at the gold right now, it is about a two and a half, 2.3 K roughly gold advantage in favor of Royal Vagabonds right now. Sorry. Also, two uh, dragon lead here in a minute. We got Notorious Mid going in, hits the E on a Conqueror. Conqueror now forced to have to use his flash to get away. Mr. Cat is here to you know try to hold this and make sure he's safe. As four players now rotating towards this top side of the map, possibly going to look to do Rift Turtle here. Alistar has roamed up right now. Both the ADCs are alone in the bot, but over here, oh, Viego Mumu catches him. Yeah, Viego taking a little bit of a trade there. With a Mumu, Mumu looking like he might try to start up this Rift Herald, but they're kind of just hovering around it and looking like they are now going to just back off. They are conceding control of this topside river over this objective. Now, I wonder oh, if they're the going to look for the all-in back once that uh, once Royal Vagabonds gets the Rift going. Uh, TI really, really needs this Rift. They need to contest this. They have a, a disadvantage in the form of the Viego that is not something they um, can really deal with. Yeah, and looking like we are seeing the fight now break out, set, using the ultimate, going in now, has a fully stacked W, does use it, hits huge true damage across the entire team of Royal Vagabonds right now, as Volibear comes in here now, using the ultimate, listen to the beat, ends up going down to the Volibear now, and now it is a 2v2 over this Rift Herald, only one jungler is left arrive, alive right now, and that is Mr. Cat getting the kill onto the bomb now, looking like they're going for more, getting the double kill, and that is a 4 or rather a two for four in the favor of Royal Vagabonds as they now uh -oh. also get to claim the Rift Herald as their prize. And right there you see the terrifying power of the Fed Viego just becoming their own team and using their own team against them. Uh, just what are you supposed to do now? You have a real problem on your hands. They they had to contest that Rift. They, they had to, but things did not turn out um, how they were hoping. Uh... Yeah, TI is on their back foot now, and Royal Vagabonds really has solid charge of this game. Yeah, and this is now a 7-1 Viego, so they're going to have to quickly figure out a way to shut this Viego down. Otherwise, he's just going to continue to accelerate and take over this game. But meanwhile, your mid lane, a little bit of training going back and forth between Conquer and Set here, and Conquer just doing a massive amount of damage after eating that W onto the set, actually wins that trade as he now gets to shove the wave into tower and look like Rift he is going to run to the bottom lane. jungle. Yeah, Rift and looking like top lane, they're going to have to deal with it as it takes down tower one already. Will he be able to kill it before it gets the charge off? No. Oh, Kataro auto attacks Alistar, applies his passive, but no more than that. And looking like it will just be the one tower in top lane that is claimed with that Rift Herald. Meanwhile, though, here mid lane. Set hits the E on a Conqueror. Conqueror gets stunned up by the Braum passive now, trying to fight this best he can. Ends up dodging the Set E very well. Gets out very little HP left. Notorious Mid getting dropped very low after using the ultimate. Does not end up being able to pick up a kill. And here's Mr. Cat here trying to clean this thing up. Ooh, yeah, see, right again, the power of the Fed Viego just oh, becomes the flash Set. Engage. Alistar goes in and they're looking like they're wanting more here. They're not finished and Alistar ends up going down to the Urgot right now as they are now trying to back off of this mid lane play, disengaging after engaging. So what was, you know, them just getting a kill for free out of all of that, they end up just trading one back right there. And uh, all in all, I mean, it's a pretty even trade now. It could have gone better, but I mean, they're right now Royal Vagabonds is so far ahead they can afford to give up little things like that. Though, I mean... Not not the best advantageous position you want to be in, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, and look like uh, we do have the team's to posture around stuff. this third dragon. They yeah, are. The, uh, I feel like TI is starting to get a little bit desperate here. The Viego is a real problem. Urgot's starting to become a problem. Um, and Viego becoming their own their own team, like, like he was just there set in that last fight, becoming set, just wrecking through what was left of TI. It was... Uh, yeah, and looking like they are just clearing out the vision right now that uh, Third Impact just established over this objective. They still have the uh, the scuttle that they did get before this, but looking like they're not really in the best position to try to stop this. Sidro looking like he's trying to engage on this set here, but forced to just back away after getting slowed. 
Mumu's still posturing around here, looking like they really don't want to try to give this thing up. They want to try to fight over this. And Alistar's zoning a Mumu away. Dragon's now down to 1,000 HP, and it is claimed by Royal Vagabonds, but they're going in here now. Say, using the ultimate, and they're able to pick up a kill currently on the Kai'Sa as the rest of the fight is breaking out right now. Pick Lulu Thresh ends up actually getting the kill on a Ghost of Katara. Notorious mid killing Alistar, and more going down. There's the Urgot dead, and Royal Vagabonds are trying to clean up this fight right now as Mr. Cat is now 10 and 1. He wow. is a monster. They claim the dragon and four kills as they now go to push mid. The monster known as Viego rolls across the rift. Oh, goodness. He is so fed right now. This champion is so strong. And like I said, able to use the enemy against himself so well. They have that giant front line, which I thought earlier was going to be a great advantageous uh, position for them to be in. You know, they set up this giant wall in front, let Kog'Ma just shoot right over their heads and dec decimate the enemy team. And Viego said, I got other plans, guys. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, wipe the planet with you. Wow, he's he's strong at this moment. I'm, yeah, uh, and... I mean, 10 minutes ago in this game, it was pretty much even within 100 gold. Now looking at it, it is currently around a, you know, 5, 6k gold difference right now. So, Just I mean, if you're 6K. third impact, like, you got to figure out a way to shut down this Viego or at the very least be able to take picks when he's not around. That is the shining silver lining for third impact right now. The shutdown on the Viego is big money, and there's going to be able to get at least two shutdowns off of him before that gold bounty disappears. So, I mean, if you can get a kill on him and then just another really quick, you can look at, you know, 11, 1200 gold in just shutdown gold plus the, the 300 from each kill. Um, you know, you can pick up almost 2000 gold by killing the Viego really quick, and that's going to do a significant amount in turning the tide of the game. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. So looking at the current state of this right now, we're looking at, you know, roughly a 20 CS difference in the mid lane right now, while also around a 20 CS difference in the top lane on the other side. So both solo laners, I mean, as far as, you know, their ability to effectively CS, uh, you know, they're doing a pretty good job of it. Uh, nobody's really like pulled away a massive lead aside from, you know, that 20 difference. That, I mean, you can argue it kind of goes either way. The total CS of the game is very even. It's mostly just kills and objective gold. And uh, It's and been a right bloody now. game so far, but you have to give it to TI to uh, for being able to keep their CS up in spite of in spite of being hammered. Yeah, and looking like right now they are going on to this Urgot. He's already about half HP. Braum now forced to use the ultimate early, and here is a huge... Volibear bear ultimate as they go in set now using his ultimate onto sidro pushing him out sidro's still alive though he hasn't died yet and he does finally die but ends up being traded back meanwhile on the other part of this fight diego ends up getting killed and that is actually a very big fight for third impact able to pick up four kills there last person Ooh. left standing is the kaisa and looking like they were trying to find her but unfortunately she was just out of range as they lost all their engage tools and now looking and like it will just, just be push mid and that's what we were just talking about right there, those shutdowns. That was a 700 gold shutdown on the Viego. That was a 150 gold shutdown on the Volibear. That's big money going over to the third impact, and you can see that reflected now in the gold in the gold difference, gone from just, just under 6K to uh, 5K now. Well, <laughs> it didn't really do too much to help them. They're, they're so far behind. Wow. Uh, yeah, that I, keeps I them from falling further down the well, though. Um, they're able to gap a little foothold. And let's see if they can climb back out of this hole that they were in. Yeah, absolutely. I think out of it, they were able to basically get a thousand gold in their favor for it. But I mean, there was no objective up that they could like really try to pressure or take that you could argue they could have tried to take the Rift Herald. They definitely had the damage for it. But with uh, respawn timers coming up and Kaisa still being alive, they just didn't want to take that risk. And I mean, ultimately, in the end right now, you know, they got those kills. Is very nice much needed but they don't really have anything else on the map to show for it they didn't really use those kills to their advantage as far as like setting a vision for an objective but urga goes for the flash e onto the gwen does not get it and gwen just flashes out of it so trading flash for flash while you know you could argue that could be worth i would say that urga's flash e engage is a very useful tool and him not having it is definitely advantageous for royal vagabonds here 
Absolutely. Royal Vagabonds is in a super strong position after seeing that, and they know it. That, that's why they're putting so much pressure on to the blue right now. Um, yeah, and they do steal it sure away. They... Amumu trying to get out of this, but now they're turning this fight as they all rotate over. Braum using the ultimate, and Urgai eats the Alistar up. As now Kaisa using the ultimate into the back line with the Killer Instinct going in on a Kataro. Kataro getting dropped very low, forced to try to flash over this wall to get out. Right now, Kogma is dead. And they are trying to clean this fight up on the other side of the map. Meanwhile, Set is 1v1 in Conquer, going for it, and ends up getting the kill. Sidra now forced to try to run away from this uh, as Amumu and Urgot are chasing him down. And this should be a dragon. Here's Kaisa here, though, on the return. And it's still a 4v2. Health bars are quite low as they're looking for Sidro. And Kaisa and Volibear are just trying what to stall this out as best they can. What a big fight for Third Impact. They really, really needed that. That put them right back into this game. It especially helped their mental, I'm assuming. Oh, Kaisa gets the kill oh. onto the bomb. Sidro, using the stopwatch, hits a huge W to try to heal this as Urgot is trying to finish up this kill, but he greets for it and cannot get the kill on Volibear as he outplays him there using the stopwatch, and they're going to Baron. Wow. And just like that, they, they give up a little bit of what they what they earned. Uh, but still, I got to say, overall, that was really, really good on the side of Third Impact. They were able to, to turn around what, uh, what looked like a losing fight. Yeah, and what seemed to be at first a little bit of a sketchy Baron call, I mean, Third Impact is not in a position at all where they can try to contest this. And wow, that ends up just being a free shred. kill. Yeah, and ignore the Alistar. He is a little bit scuffed right now after hitting that Blast Cone. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's no way that Third Impact could realistically answer it as uh, both the jungler and the set went to the bottom side of the map to uh, clear ways and catch some uh, jungle farms. So it ends up just being a free Baron over to the side of Royal Vagabonds as every time Third Impact seems to try to find something or do something right to try to get back into this, Royal Vagabonds just one step ahead of them and ends up getting objective after objective or just getting something back in return to keep themselves ahead in this right now as they're still up around 5,000 gold. Their objective control has been what's uh, phenomenal this game. The ability to make sure that uh, they win the fight if there's an objective up. While, while Third Impact has done an amazing job in, in grabbing some of these past couple of fights, there hasn't been, as you pointed out, an objective for them to go to once the fight was won. Um, whereas um, in almost every case after Royal Vagabonds has won a fight, there has been a place they can rotate to. There's been gold that they can go pick up. There's been a dragon, a rift, a baron that they can utilize across the map. Um, and uh, you, you start to see that slowly force TI back, though though they got a pretty strong foothold against uh, what Royal Vagabonds was doing. They've, they've been able to fight back quite a bit uh, from that deficit that they had earlier. Yeah, absolutely. And currently looking like Roll Vagabond's going to try to pressure this bottom tier 2 tower right now. As Amumu and Urgot are sitting here trying to defend it now, we have four people on this bottom side pressuring this. Sidro, though, looking like he's going to try to take a fight over here with the set as he does take a little bit of an aggressive trade, forces a lot of cooldowns out of the set, opts not to try to all end him under his tower. And right now, third impact just trying to do the best that they can to try to clear these waves and try to keep their tier 2 towers alive. Royal Vagabonds using Baron as best they can to try and push down the turrets. Uh, doing a decent job of defending on the side of TI right now against the, the power of these Baron minions. Those suckers will take down a turret really fast if you're not there. Of course, they're having to put a lot of their resources on the bot side of the map in order to, to keep those Baron minions from overrunning them. And... In doing so, they've allowed Volibear to get a top push going on and Gwen in the mid also. Uh, so this is kind of a almost an impossible choice here for, for third impact. Yeah, as they're just going to force this tower down right now. Braum using the ultimate, but really to no avail, mainly as just a peel tool. As Volibear looking like he's going to try to all-in set right now under his tower, using his own ultimate, but set using his. And right now, Volibear trying to run away right now, but Linny is here to help clean this up as set ends up getting the kill onto this Volibear. So now four members left to Royal Vagabonds with this Baron buff to try to use what last little bit they can to siege, but they're just going to be forced off of this mid as now Third Impact has the advantage of men. Royal Vagabonds now has to be afraid of Cog, though. You saw how fast Cog just shredded through the Volibear. Um, this is something they need to watch out for. While they still have a lead, yes, um, that Cog is incredibly dangerous. Uh, if If one thing goes wrong in a fight, he can 
absolutely obliterate everyone on the side of royal vagabonds um before they can before they can shut him down and stop him yeah absolutely we can like dragon will be up in about 50 seconds it will be the fifth dragon of the game and soul point still for royal vagabonds looking like this is a mountain soul so if they're able to claim this mountain soul it might just be the final nail in the coffin as they could it might be close out the game with it third impact seeing this as well rotating towards the dragon they cannot let royal vagabonds get that mountain soul the shield is just too much for them to try and go through now if ti can get the mountain soul ti is in an incredible spot because like i said they have that giant bp front line and you add a shield into that and all of a sudden all the burst damage that that royal vagabonds is presenting is negated yeah and looking like alistar right now trying to look for something maybe you know keeping himself in a good position always be able to go in if the opportunity does present itself as now all of third impact is here Amumu is sitting on this blast cone right now looking for an opportunity oh. as Alistar goes in and they engage on the Linny in the back line as the entire front line of third impact kind of leaves her hanging and she just ends up getting absolutely obliterated. Zero kill is now getting dropped very low, doing his best to cut it out, ends up finally going down to the Kog'Maw passive, but Royal Vagabonds right now looking fully in control of this fight as they look to finish up this Amumu here. Set now trying to do his best to fight on the other side of this against the Alistar in this 1v1 as now Volibear and Mr. Cat on the Viego rotate over here to try to finish up and secure this kill on the set as he does get CC chained and will go down. That is an ace for Royal Vagabonds as they now opt to push mid while Gwen ends up taking the dragon. Ooh, that might be the game for Royal Vagabonds. They noted that the cog was a little strong and like you said, they, uh, they went right for their cog went down fast and uh the rest of the team fell shortly thereafter without any damage to to output yeah a little bit of weird macro there as gwen opts to teleport towards the top outer or the top uh, nexus tower or not nexus sorry inhibitor tower um so mr cat was forced to walk all the way from that mid tower all the way back to dragon to uh to take it they still end up getting two towers they get the inhib you know they get and the, dragon, the dragon soul but uh you know, I think that they probably could have done that with Gwen just sitting back, cleaning up the dragon, and then teleporting in if need be. I'm really um, surprised that they didn't go for a Nexus turret there. Uh, I thought with both of them rotating, you could have uh, you could have taken one in Hib and and put some damage down, if not completely taken a Nexus turret. But they opt for the uh, the disengage and the reset. Probably not the worst of ideas, especially since they're so strong. It's like why chance it? Um, and it looks like they might be setting up for Baron here if they can get the Baron. That can that that will be, I believe, the final nail in the coffin. That they uh, actually, that's going to be dirt on top of it. I think. Um, yeah, as the, they currently that, have this mountain soul, they're getting the yeah. baron. You know, they're mountain up about eight baron. Yeah, they're sitting in a really strong spot after taking this baron. They should be up about nine k. Amumu is kind of in position to try to look for a steal, but ends up not going for it. And they are currently up almost ten thousand gold in ninety eight hundred right gold right now. It is a pretty significant gold league. TI is definitely against the ropes. Um, but Kogma is still a scary champion. And I think Royal Vagabonds knows it. I think they know that they have to engage on the Cog and get him out of the fight. Otherwise, they uh, they stand a chance of this game being drug out to the point where TI can get some items going, can get some uh, some fights won, and... Uh, and, and then you're in a really tough spot to try and, and deal with tanks in late game, you know? Yeah, absolutely. As they are now knocking down this mid lane inhibitor, as Set looking to try to go in, Alistar forced to use a W away, using his own ultimate. And right now, Set using the ultimate on top of him, hits zero kills with the W, but it is not enough damage as they just end up cleaning this thing up. And currently... Gwen ended up actually trying to take a 1v3 fight during that fight, but it did end up giving enough space for the team to be able to clean up the other two members as they are now knocking down these Nexus Towers right now. Two people are left standing for the side of Third Impact, but it is Linny on the Kogma getting the kill onto the Alistar. He was quite low, but still able to get that kill is very useful as now they're trying to do their best to just wave clear and push them away. And it is Citro Kog'Maw and goes to zero kills. Yeah, if and they're going in right, the flash gauge. 
Ooh. And Viego just hits a beautiful flash engage there as Zero Kill is able to put out a mass amount of damage with the Viego to end up cleaning up the last two kills necessary as they are now on the Nexus itself, and that will be game one in the books. Oh, game one over to Royal Vagabonds in a bloody back and forth that really it looked like T.I. was going to come back from for a little bit, uh, but in the end were unable to do so. Alrighty, yeah, we are going to take a brief five-minute break now as we get the second game ready and prepared. And uh, when we come back, game two. Game two. 